Okay, so we're here with the 6.4 um, topic test. If we zoom in on the first question, it says, boxes on the left show the names of the objects in the universe, the boxes on the right show the time taken. So we're really looking for the shortest time for the moon because the moon is the closest to us. So the moon I've put as 1.3 seconds. And then... Look in this, we've got a, a star and then I've got a galaxy. The sun is probably the next closest. Well, not probably, is the next closest. So that is 500 seconds there. And then is a star or a galaxy closer? Well, I'm going to say that a star is uh, going to be closer to us. So that's 4.5 years. And then the galaxy is over 2 million years away. So that was that. So it's 4 answers and three marks so you need to, to get uh, at least two correct for one mark and then if you're getting three correct you get two marks and then if you're getting four correct you get three marks then we look at so let's shrink that up there and then let's look at this one now it says question two uh the block diagram shows that the life cycle uh, of a star much larger than our sun so we're looking at a big sun here so, of all of these, I can see that the main sequence star is the sort of starting point. Before that, obviously, is the proto star, but that's going to be stage one out of these four choices. And then I know a supernova comes after a, a red supergiant or a super red giant, which is stage two. And then the supernova comes after that, stage three, and then the black hole. It can either finish as a black hole or, and I'd have to check here, I think it's a. A neutron star. Yeah, it is a neutron star. Um, so that's, again, three marks. So to get one mark, you need two correct. To get two marks, you need three correct. And then to get three marks, you need four correct. The following diagram shows the major forces acting on a main sequence star. So this is a balanced force. So you've got the gravity coming in, gravitational force coming in on it. And the pressure of the gas or the radiation pressure or the... The, the pressure from the chemical reactions that's happening inside that star, that fission, turning uh, helium into uh, hydrogen, is pushing outwards. So you've got that gravity coming in and the pressure pushing out. So it's a, it's a balanced reaction. And then following on from that question, C... It says, choose words from the box to complete the sentences below. So main sequence stars generate energy by fusion, not fission, okay? Fusion is the one that the stars generate. Fission, oh, that's frozen, is when we come to doing um, the radiation and how nuclear reactors uh, generate their energy. So of hydrogen into helium, so it turns hydrogen into helium. So, uh, heavier elements are created when stars much larger than our own sun collapse. The heavier elements include uranium, which we use in nuclear fission reactions. So, there we are. So, that it's telling you that fission is using in, uh, used in reactors there. So, we know that that one must be fusion. Again, we can get that from the question. It could have been iron there, but the fact that it says which we use in fission reactors on Earth... We don't use iron in that, we use uranium, because iron is a heavier element. Because we can only have elements heavier than iron, because they are created during a supernova explosion. So when you first read the sentence, these heavier elements include, it could have been iron, but the fact that it said, which we use in our fission reactors, it must be uranium. And then question three. Write the object named above in order of increasing size. So... The Earth is the smallest thing there, then it's our sun, then the solar system, which is many suns, uh, sorry, the solar system is the, the planets orbiting our sun, sorry, our Milky Way consists of many suns, that's our galaxy, and then obviously the universe is the largest there. So one, two, three, four, five answers, only four marks, so again, you need at least two, any two to get one mark, and then the marks follow on from that. State what is meant by a light year. It's the distance, not the time travelled by light in one year. So many students got that wrong because they said 
the time travelled by light in one year. It's not, it's the distance, it's a measurement of distance. Question four. Uh, let me zoom in on that because I can't quite see that. I'm taking the best photo there. Distances to stars and solar system galaxies are very large. Astronomers make their uh, lives easier by by using different by different uh, units really. So we got one light year is equal to the distance travelled by light in one year. Could have answered the previous question with that statement there. One astronomical unit AU is the distance between the Earth and the Sun, and one AU is equal to about uh, eight point three light minutes. Now they've given you that there. But there's no actual calculations needed for these questions because it says the centre of our galaxy is 30,000 light years away. How long does it take light to travel? So it's asking how long, how many years does it take? Well, if it's 30,000 light years away, then it's going to take 30,000 years for that light to travel. That's all that question is asking. How long does it take light to travel from the sun to the earth? Well, if you recall here, Distance between light and earth is 1 AU, or you could have said, yeah, so it wants it in 8 minutes, 8.3 minutes, and it's, it says there 1 AU is equal to 8.3 minutes. So we did need this after all. Light takes, uh, I think that says 3 hours to travel from Pluto to earth, so it says 13, sorry. What is the distance between these planets? Don't get too confused here. It is a confusing question, but if you actually work out what it's asking, light takes 13 hours to travel from Pluto to Earth. So what's the distance? Remember, we can use a light year or we can use a light hour. So we can say 13 light hours would be the answer to that. Uh, again, you know, you could be confused in trying to work it out, converting that minutes, and, but it's not that complicated. Mercury is 0.4 AU, astronomical units from the Sun. Venus is further than Mercury uh, from the Sun, but not as far as Earth. So, estimate the distance between Sun and Venus. Well, Mercury is the first planet, it's 0.4. Earth is 1. And I've said anywhere between 0.4 and 1. I should have written, I should have written that the other way, really. I should have said 0.4 and 1. Anywhere between 0.4 and 1 astronomical units, because 0.4... To Mercury, one to the Earth, Venus is in between, so it's anywhere between that. Then we kind of revisit in the core a little bit by here because it wants to know uh, which wavelength or wave pattern has the lowest frequency. Well, the frequency is the number of wavelengths that pass a particular point each second, and I can see there's only one wavelength there, that's one and a half wavelengths. This is more than one wavelength each, so it's got to be A. Which pattern has the largest amplitude, so the highest peaks and troughs? It's going to be B. And then which wave pattern has the largest wavelength? So wavelength is the distance measured from one to so one complete wavelength. And it's going to be that because it's one, two, three, four, five, six boxes. Compared to this one, one, two, three, four boxes there, and it starts again. And then it brings us on to the last page, which is question four. Five, and it says, name the two gases uh, that were present after the Big Bang. Uh, all stars are made from these gases. So it uh, converts hydrogen into helium, basically, or helium into hydrogen. I keep forgetting which one. I should know, really. I think it told us back uh, on one of these. I think it was this one. D -d -d. There we are. It... Uh, it says the main sequence stars generate energy by fusion of hydrogen into helium. So they actually turn hydrogen into helium. So if you can remember the first element in the periodic table, it turns that into helium. So that's what stars do. The most abundant gas in the universe, they turn hydrogen and then they turn it into helium. Okay, they take hydrogen and turn it into helium. When main sequence stars reach the end of their lives, uh, the stages that they go through depend on their masses. That's correct, because they all start as protostars, and then they go into main sequence stars depending on their size. Choose words and phrases of the box to complete the diagram below. So I've identified here that a supernova must be a big star, a white dwarf we can only find in a small star cycle, black hole only in a big star cycle, and a red giant only in a small star. Brown dwarf I've never come across, so I think that's a red herring just in there to confuse you. So, our sun is a medium-sized star. Well, 
is it's nowhere near as big as these the larger stars. So the red giant is going to come before a white dwarf. And then your supernova for the large star is going to come before your black hole. Because the black hole, you can either become a neutron star or a black hole. Black hole is the, the, the last stage of a life cycle of a star. And that is that paper.